my god. Oh, I wish I had the GoPro on. I wish I had the she GoPro was on. moving. It was time to head north into Itosha National Park. Spending time with the orphan cheetahs was amazing and images were captured for the client. But I wanted something more, something elusive and something wild. We drove into the unknown with no idea of what we might see and what we might capture. These are the moments I cherish the most, the anticipation of what's to come. So our drive to Itosha was a lot longer than we anticipated. We're here now, but we are very late. So with the national parks, they usually kick you out by sunset, which is a great shame because the best light is always at sunset. So we have about an hour to shoot in Itosha. And as it stands, we don't know the best place to go. So we are depending on pure luck and intuition. So we've got a male and a female lion just by the side of the road. We've probably driven for about two kilometers, three kilometers. He's currently behind some bushes, just waiting for him to walk out into the open. And that's when I'll get my shot. Right, here he comes. Okay, he started to come, but then he, <laughs> then he stopped. Unfortunately, the lions didn't stick around for very long and headed deep into the bush. But luckily, we had a plan. So we've come around the back of the bushes where the lions walked into. No more than 300 meters through the bushes. And there's a watering hole just outside here. We suspect or we hope that the lions are actually coming towards this watering hole. So we're gonna sit here and wait patiently. Fingers crossed we'll see those two lions again. just walked in, we've got not very much time at all before we need to be out of the park, but the lions have just come in towards the watering hole. This is very, very exciting. Just behind the bushes, so I can't get a shot. Here they come, they're coming now. So sitting with the lions was phenomenal. They did get up and they did move into position and they walked around and we got some lovely photographs, but nothing compelling. And what I realized is that I'm, I'm sat in one of the best places in the world for wildlife photography. I have amazing kit and there are these amazing animals in front of me, but I'm not coming away with images that are amazing. And it dawned on me so quickly that wildlife photography is very, very difficult because it's not just about having a kit and being in an area with certain animals and being with the animals and being in a good location and nice lighting. Yes, of course, all those things count, but it's more than that. It's knowing the animal's behavior. It's capturing their behavior. It's capturing that rare special moment and using composition and creativity and all of that. Um, yeah, that's what I'm learning fast. So as the sun sets here in Africa, I'm hoping that I'm gonna try and hone my skills over the next couple of days. And I'm really hopeful that tomorrow and the day after, I will capture at least one image that I'm really happy with, that has creativity or action or, or something that really moves me. So for now, we're gonna go and have dinner Rest up and we'll see what tomorrow brings. The 
So it's just after sunrise and we've made our way into the National Park and it's just gorgeous. No more than five minutes after being in the National Park, we spotted two cheetahs with a kill. They're out in the open plains. It's gorgeous. They're probably about four to 500 meters away. And we can just see them through the long lens. It makes it possible to watch them. So George, who's our very knowledgeable wildlife expert, he's informed us that this kill that the cheetahs have got is probably a very fresh kill because they tend to eat their kills straight away. So we probably miss this by about 10 minutes. Ah, oh, but this is amazing just to watch. What a start to the day, what a start. Seeing the cheetahs feeding on a fresh kill was a moment I will never forget. I didn't come away with any high quality photographs, they were simply too far away. However, I did leave with a sense of satisfaction and fulfillment knowing that I had witnessed something special. I owe a lot to photography. A lot of the breathtaking things I get to see would never have happened if it weren't for the drive to capture and create images. I am always so thankful for the times I have, even if I don't get a photograph. So we have now left Itosha and we're in Safari Hook, which is a private game reserve. Uh, it's very nice, it's got, we've got luxury rooms, we've got a swimming pool, we've got Wi-Fi, very, very excited to be spending an evening here. Um, and we're going out on a game drive tonight, hopefully to see Black Rhino, which will be phenomenal. Um, again, I have no idea what's going to happen. I, I'm, just, I'm just really enjoying being able to observe the wildlife. Um, and again, if I get an image that, I, that, that is striking, an image that really moves me, then that is a bonus. But for now, I think I, it's, it's about 40 degrees and I need to get in that swimming pool. So we're on our first private game drive with Safari Hook Lodge and we've spotted our second black rhino. The first one was too far away, it was way off into the bushes, but this one is probably about 100 meters away and just seems to be walking towards us so we're just staying put and we're going to see if she comes out into the open. We also think she might have a calf with her. This is very exciting. Um, I've never seen a black rhino, I've seen white rhino before. But it's so special because black rhinos are endangered. They are almost extinct, maybe 20,000 left in the world. We were warned that the black rhinos could be aggressive, but this mother and calf were so calm and seemed to be so accepting of our presence. But the mood soon changed, and what happened next will stay with me for a long time. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, I wish I had the GoPro on. I wish I had the she GoPro on. She was moving! She was fast! Jesus! Oh! My! So after the excitement of our black rhino incident, shall we say, we are now in the tranquility of this lovely open grassland. And about a kilometer away, we have a herd of zebra. And it's just gorgeous. They're so far away, but you can get almost a really abstract image. It's windy, um, but the lighting is just gorgeous. We've got the setting sun behind us there gorgeous yellow grasses a little bit of color in the sky just behind me there and these zebra in the field yeah this is great i'm shooting with a 100 400 because the 400 the 200 400 is too big and i, I can't hand hold it very well it's getting quite dark now so i need something smaller and more manageable but this is like super sharp this lens 
It's f5.6, but that's okay. Well, it's f4 to 5.6, but that's okay. So I'm just getting down in the grasses here, just trying to get this shot with the focusing on the zebra and shooting through the grass. It's uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to work. Um, but just to be out in the meadows or in the grasslands in Africa under a sky like this. It's moments like this that I'll remember forever. Although not as much as I remember being charged by a black rhino. Yeah, this is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. busy schedule meant that we could not spend more than one night in each reserve, so we said goodbye to Safari Hook and the next morning we would be heading back into Itosha National Park. Nothing could prepare us for what we would witness the next day. <laughs> 